Hi everybody, welcome to this month's Life on Mindfulness. I have a really beautiful practice that I love sharing with people and I call it bringing the mind home. Bringing the mind home. Sometimes when we even hear that phrase or say it to ourselves, it enables or elicits a certain feeling that we might have a certain degree of unfamiliarity with because most people don't actually know what that means. What does that mean to bring the mind home? So if you think about those days when you had a really long work day and you get home, you kick off the shoes, you finally allow that gut that you've been sucking in all day long to look thin, you finally allow that gut to kind of flub out, you change your clothes into the oldest, rattiest, and yet the most comfortable jammies in the universe, you've come home, right? You've allowed yourself to let down your guard, and it's almost like this sense of home and coming home is a place of refuge where you can just show up you as you. When we practice bringing the mind home, it's not at all dissimilar to this phenomenon of bringing the mind to a place that feels like a sense of refuge, where you can just allow your mind to be as it is, again, you with you. So one of the fundamental hallmarks of this sense of bringing the mind home, and even when we come home from work, as I described, there's this deep sense of kind of letting down our guards. So if you think about it, when we have our stress response on, this is a form of us having our guards up, right? The entire physiology of the body is up and activated in vigilance to prepare us for fight, flight, freeze, I tend to add two more on there, fix it or fake it. We have this certain degree of vigilance present in the body, AKA having our guards up. And if you think about what the opposite of that is, that's what relaxation is, right? It's a softening throughout the body, letting our guards down. Now the interesting thing is that we can many times allow our guards to come down physiologically, but we're not always doing it on the level of mind. And the reason for this is because a lot of people don't actually know how. So a really beautiful way of understanding meditation in general is that you can understand it as a practice of intentionally, consciously letting down our guards, both on the physical level as well as on the level of mind. So what typically keeps our mind's guards up is our thinking, right? We can be home from work in our ratty pajamas with our bellies flubbed out, but our minds can be left at work, worrying about things, planning for the next day. Our thinking keeps our mind's guards up. Another really big place that people have a tendency to go in their thinking that definitely keeps that guard up on the level of mind is we get really involved in trying to figure out what other people are thinking, right? We get into their business and into their mind. Why did they say that about me? What do they think of me? In fact, some research shows us that about 98% of all the things that we think about have something or other to do with what we think is going on in other people's minds. So let's connect back to that phrase, bringing the mind home. We brought the body home from the office or wherever it was. Now we have to practice bringing the mind home, getting our minds out of the office, AKA the thoughts of the office, or as well as getting our minds out of other people's minds, other people's thoughts, worrying about what other people are thinking about us. It can be helpful to think about like a guest, or like an unwanted guest in other people's minds. And so through this practice of bringing the mind home, it's like we're leaving the guest house, we're no longer the unwanted visitor, and it's time to just come home. But now how do we do this? Like what's the specificities behind practicing actually bringing the mind home? So 
So now within the context of mindfulness practice, how we bring the mind home is, you guessed it, we practice bringing the mind, moving the mind into the present, getting our mind out of thoughts of the past, out of thoughts of the future, and creating a certain degree of connection and refuge even in this present moment experience of just being right here, right now. If we investigate, we can see very clearly that what makes us feel not at home on the level of mind is our thinking. And primarily thinking is all about the past and the future. And typically what keeps us also from not feeling at home isn't the good thoughts, it's the thoughts of worry, it's the thought of fear, it's the thought of judgment, etc. So to connect it all back to mindfulness practice, which is my job as a mindfulness teacher, it's really about the letting go of some of these thoughts by moving the mind into the present. And now this brings us to one of the most fundamental teachings in mindfulness practice that I know of, which is how letting go functions on the level of mind, right? So we learn that the mind can't actually be in two places at once. And this is supported by current neuroscience. And in fact, I was able to ask specifically Dr. Richard Davidson, I sat in one of his classes, and I asked him this question. I said, is it possible for the mind to be in more than one place at one time? And his answer was that it is not possible for the mind to be in more places all at the same time. Or in other words, to use his language, we can typically only hold one primary object of attention or awareness at any given moment in time. So though it feels sometimes that the mind is all over the place, if these fingers were thoughts, the thoughts aren't actually happening with simultaneity or all at the same time. What's happening is you're having one thought, then another, then another, then another, and sometimes they're happening so quickly that the feeling is that the mind is all over the place. But again, the mind cannot hold more than one primary object of attention or awareness at any given moment in time. So instead of focusing on the letting go piece of things, I instead encourage my students, encourage you, to focus on this movement of mind, this sense of bringing the mind home into the present moment experience of whatever it is that you're doing. Eating dinner, lying on the sofa, even sitting at your desk answering emails at home. You can practice bringing the mind home through the practice of bringing the mind into the present. So in essence, what we practice doing is we practice creating an experience of being home for ourselves on the level of mind in the present. So now this practice of bringing the mind home isn't always dependent on us being physically at home. It's only dependent on this ability to move our minds out of the past and out of the future, coming home to the present, coming home to this experience of being alive and in your body right here, right now. Now, when I share this specific teaching with people, some people say, well, what if, you know, I bring the mind home to the present and my body feels yucky and my mind feels yucky and I have a stomach ache and my back hurts. That doesn't seem so homey and relaxing. What can very quickly step into our practice here is judgment judging this experience of being present, which again brings us off into thought, off into thinking. That's where judgment lives. Judgment doesn't live in the present direct moment experience of just being alive and in your body. It comes from our thoughts, how we perceive and make judgments about that experience. And again, and when we stay in judgment, that's what dislodges our sense of being fully comfortable, fully at home, in a place of refuge in our lives, in the only time we're ever alive, which is in the present moment. So certainly it can get a little tricky in there. 
But the straight up mindfulness practice is to keep coming back to this sense of being fully in the present, getting out of the past, out of the future, and learning to create a certain degree of home, a certain degree of letting down of your guard into your present moment experience. So most people think that this is just gonna happen, right? If they get comfortable enough, they get relaxed enough, or a lot of people depend on that, you know, actually coming home to their physical home, and they think that's just somehow gonna create that on the level of mind. But that's why we spend five hours on Netflix, because we're still waiting to get comfortable on the level of mind, or why we noodle on social media, or we read books, or whatever it is that we do to try to relax ourselves on the level of mind. We're waiting for it to naturally happen, and so much of the time, it just doesn't. We have to take this more active role of consciously and intentionally bringing the mind home, letting down the mind's guard as we feel more at home in our present moment experience. So the downloadable guided meditation that comes with today's teaching is called, you guessed it, bringing the mind home. It's a simple, straight up practice where we kind of connect our minds to this phrase, bringing the mind home, get familiar with it, and then literally practice this movement of mind into the present so that we can become more and more at home in our present moment life experience. And then what starts to happen with continued practice is you can really find yourself being at home on the level of mind, wherever you are, whenever, wherever, you want to get your mind out of the past, out of the future, out of the worries, out of the judgment, out of the plans, you can move into this practice of just coming home to your present moment experience. And then what happens is we start to feel more at home, more at ease, more comfortable with having our guards down for more and more and more of our lives. Okay? This is my wish for you. This is my wish for everyone. I'll see you next time in Life on Mindfulness.